Hey y'all, today I'm gonna run a little shed series for you. Today I'm putting together a console table for my wife. And uh, I'm gonna run through a few steps here and kind of give you an overview about some of the things that we're gonna cover in this course. And just give you a brief introduction to using power tools, taking measurements, things along those lines. So here I got the console table flipped upside down. Got the tabletop here, got the side supports, and then the legs too. Um, I'm gonna kinda jump back and forth with processes here and talk a little bit about each step and how I've put this thing together. The first thing you should do when you're starting a project is always get all the details from your client. In this case, the client is my wife and uh, she keeps me pretty busy with these projects, so I should have a lot of Shed Series content coming at you this year. When you're talking to a client, you need to find out some things like, you know, how big the piece should be, what kind of material, what kind of finish do they want on that, the finish is like a stain or a paint. And then you need to go and take some measurements of the space if that opportunity is around. Uh, sometimes you just get given a project and you I don't know the general size already, so you don't need to go measure the space, but in this case, this piece of furniture is going in the house, and it's going at the end of the couch, in between the couch and the doorway, so I need to make sure I have enough clearance when I'm putting this thing together so it'll fit and so it looks right in that space. So you always wanna have one of these bad boys with you. It's a tape measure. For those of you don't see it, that haven't seen it before. Each number, big number is an inch, and then you get smaller here, it's backwards, not focused. Each smaller number represents fractions of inches. Hopefully most of you, if you're taking this course, have seen that before, but if you haven't, that's okay. I go in depth about how to use the tape measure and then you guys will all be pros by the end of it. Another important thing to carry around with you is pen and paper or pencil and paper. I prefer pencil because it's uh it erases off of like a like wood if you're doing a project if you use pen you kind of marked up on your thing and sometimes sanding and staining over it doesn't always take it away so pencil is usually the smarter choice there uh, so i went inside i measured up i got my measurements uh, when i'm cutting i'll roll through those measurements with you so first things first i'm gonna set up this miter saw Miter saw cuts boards in half, splits it down the middle. I got it set up at an angle right now, but um, the table saw, contrary to the miter saw, if I turn my board like this, I would cut long ways down the board. So the table saw is usually for wider pieces of wood and the miter saw is for cutting wood in half or you know different sizes but horizontally as you can see i have it angled i have a bit of a mess around the saw itself so i'm going to clean off the area um, you always want to make sure your workspace is clear of anything that could potentially get in the way i also have my pencil here and i have my speed square this is a tool that's really useful and I'll go over how to use it later on. I also have my saw angled, and I think I already said that a couple times, but what I'm gonna do here is loosen up this handle, push down on the thumb button, and slide this back to zero degrees. Once it's on zero, you gotta make sure that it's right on zero, because sometimes you can be a little bit left of it, or a little bit right of it, and it's going to skew your cut. You don't want that. You want to make sure it's exactly zero. Once it's there, tighten your handle back down and that prevents it from rocking on you while it's cutting. Also, if you notice, there's a laser. So I have a laser guide there right in the center of the blade. You can turn your laser on and off right here. We're going to have a little bit different equipment, so it's not quite going to be the same. And then if I squeeze that trigger there, it's going to turn the saw on. When you pull that down, the guard here moves up. When you let it up, the guard moves back into place. 
So that's a little safety feature. And then when you want to pin your saw down, this is going to be tricky with two hands holding the camera. When you pin your saw down, there's a button usually on the sides. Once you push that in, it will lock that saw blade down so this is in the rest position. So it's not going to be, you know, this is probably the safest way to have this thing. Okay. That's the miter saw. Well, that's my miter saw. You guys have DeWalt. Pro tip, if you want to make the same cut multiple times, what you do is set up a stop block. So what this thing is at the end here. So when I slide my piece of wood in, when I get it into the saw and put it there, and slide it to that stop block. That way every time I'm cutting the same cut right down the middle here. Sorry for the camera angle. Now this is a makeshift workbench that I had with scrap parts. So you can see underneath, it's kind of stacked up to raise it to where I'm not bent over too far. And then I slid my stop block through the middle here. So it goes all the way back to the other side. And this makes it adjustable. So I can slide it all the way in, all the way out. And that's moving this other side here. Like I said, a stop block's useful when you're making the same cut over and over again. In this case, don't need it. So now that I have my saw set up, what I need to do is go over my cut list. So I know that I want the tabletop to be 48 inches, and then I want the table itself to be 30 inches tall. So what I'm gonna do when I cut my legs, when I'm determining their height, I have to take the thickness of the tabletop and subtract that from the overall height of my table. And then once I have that number, then I got my legs. So the tabletop is three quarters inches thick. And then I do that minus 30, gave me 27. Gave me 28 and a quarter. It gave me 29 and a quarter. After that, I needed to make some decisions here about how far away I'm gonna have each leg from the corner and how my support pieces are gonna be when I make this thing. Because you need to figure that out so you know how, how long to cut these side pieces. And uh, this particular design called for 45 degree angle cuts at each end. And then that table leg is actually gonna be turned so it's not just your normal squared up table leg. I'll show you what I mean right here. So this table leg, this stuff stands out by the way, this table leg is tilted. So instead of being like this, straight ahead, it's tilted to the side. What I did was I determined how far away I wanted each board on the side here. And then I set a 45 degree angle down the middle of that and then I set a 45 degree angle off the side of that and that gave me my squared entry point my 90 degree entry point and allowed for me to get the endpoints of the table supports all the way down same spot so let's check because I forget off the top of my head how far this is I went an inch and a quarter, roughly, off the side in both spots. So I have that set up on each side. So I went, oh, maybe a little shorter over here. Nope, about an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, somewhere in there. And that gave me, um, set up my whole little diagram here for spacing. Also a good idea to lay out your plan before you start cutting. That way you can double check your measurements and that really uh, cuts down on uh, mistakes. Not making mistakes industry wise saves you money because then you don't have wasted boards like this. I made the wrong measurement and I did the ultimate sin. I cut it too short. If you cut too short, you can't go back from that. You can only use it as scrap wood from now on. So when cutting, I first started out with my tabletop. That way I knew the exact measurement that I was working with width-wise, so I knew how long the board was. 
Then I went with legs. I already got those cut. Those were 29 and a quarter. And then I have my supports cut already. What I am gonna cut extra is a support across from that side to that side in order to support lower down so my legs don't over time go that would be a bad thing to happen the table would be ruined so i'm going to put a support there to there and do the same thing on this side there to there and then add a beam going down the middle of it that way it supports the table this way too so i'm supported this way then i'll be supported that way you don't want those degrees of freedom to be there because your projects and integrity goes down the drain you want to make sure that that this piece of furniture or whatever you're doing will withstand uh, lots of years of use so like i said i'm gonna make these cuts for the center supports there and uh i'll do a little recording for this part first things first though before you cut before you do anything that has potential to be dangerous ppe personal protective equipment make sure you got it on at all times you only got two eyes, you mess them up, you're gonna be blind. There's no going back from that. So always, always wear them, no matter what. Don't forget. So I can take a pre-cut piece. Just draw a line where I need it. This being the template, since it's already cut for the existing sides. I slide this guy up here, line up my laser on the opposite side of my cut. I'll show you what I mean there, give me a second. I put it on the opposite side of my cut, so I'm saving the board this way. I put my laser on the outside of that because of the blade thickness. If I make a cut on the part that I'm going to save, then it's going to end up being too short because the blade is about an eighth of an inch thick. So you put it on the outside. And then, like I said earlier, if you mess up on your measurements, if you cut too short, you can't go back. There's no going back from that. So if you cut longer, you can always cut it down one more time and I'll save your board so you're not wasting wood. So I'll make sure that I'm locked in here. Uh, I'll go over that clamp a little bit later. Then you make sure everything's supported. You want to be flush up against your walls back here, and you cut. Notice I'm leaving the saw down until it stops spinning. If you lift it up beforehand, you're making two cuts. Even though you're not gonna come down on the wood again, what's gonna happen is it's gonna rub on that surface one more time, and that's shaving off some more wood. It's not very significant, but it's enough to make a difference sometimes. So here I got my piece cut, line it up to my template. All right, it's a little longer. It's a little longer because when I did my pencil mark, the pencil protrudes further out. And then that eighth of an inch that I marked down will cause an issue too. So here I can go back, cut one more time. First things first, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna draw the right angle on here. Because if I needed it cut, if I needed a cut on this side and I go to put it in the saw and I've drawn on that side, that angle would be wrong so I'd have to flip it over and now I don't have a pencil mark on the other side. So make sure you plan out what side you're cutting first to make sure that you're going to draw on the right face because it's a pain to go back and figure out what side that's supposed to be on. opposite this time of the line so that's something to pay attention to now I'm saving the wood going this way instead of the wood going that way like last time 
Uh, this is always tricky when you don't have anything to hold on to this. Even doing something like this would be dangerous because my thumb's in the way. So you just want to have it clamped down as best as you can, as tight as you can get it. And then you cut. Let's see if that's any closer. Perfect. Lines up, flush on both sides. I got it. Then you just repeat that step and we're moving on to the next thing, which is putting these pocket holes in place. So you want to use this tool. It's called a Craig pocket hole jig. A jig is basically like a setup for whatever you're working with. Um, in this case, I wanna put pocket holes into my leg supports and then into my legs as shown here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna drill holes diagonally into this piece of wood and they're gonna be hidden when they go into this piece of wood here. So it'll make that connection from this face to that face. And then what I'll do once I have it set up how I want it, this is actually gonna be flipped. And so my holes at the bottom of this piece of furniture are gonna be on the underside and the tabletop. So they're not gonna be shown. It's just gonna be one flat surface. Those are things that you have to pre-plan because if you're just going on a whim, you're gonna end up messing something up and you're gonna get to a point and you're gonna be like, crap, man, I didn't even think about that. And now I've ruined this part of the project. So I have to start this all over again. What's that cost you? Time, money, frustration. So let me walk you through how to set up this jig. I'm gonna set the camera down and hope for the best. All right, so you wanna make sure you have this bit. It's a whole setup. This comes with a drill bit. You got numbers on the side here and that's telling you your depth. So you just move this lock collar up or down. My piece is an inch and a half thick. That's how I'm gonna drill on this uh, board here. So put that into your drill. You take this Craig piece, what it is. You got this blue thing, has a hole and it's angled down like that. The rest of this is just support. And then you have three of these that go together like that for when you want to drill. You end up shifting that. Sorry, I had it in the wrong place. You shift it and then your hole's in the middle and that's spacing you out on a two by four. In this case, this is just a one by, so all I need is the one piece. I got this clamp that's gonna be used for it and it's got a little knob on the top of it. That knob goes into my jig like that, rotate it around, put your board over the end, and then I'm working on an angle cut, it's a little bit different, I'm working to get this hole centered up in the middle of that board, that way when I cut, oh, I'm sorry, when I drill, I'm lined up drilling into the other piece through the middle. Sometimes it falls out, can be a pain. All right. That's clamped down, hold your board steady. Take your drill. Goes in, comes out. Shake up the dust. Now I have my jig hole. So then you have to change out your bits. You put this on for your screw head. My screws are over here. I'm using these, using these Craig two and a half inch screws indoor. It's got a square bit at the top of it. Just plug this bad boy in, into your hole. Right in there. I'm just gonna hand tighten it down for now as a demonstration. Just 
just repeat from there. Once you get all your pocket holes drilled out, then it's time for assembly. It's best to have two people with this step because holding the legs and holding your side supports is a little tricky to do with only two hands. You gotta hold the drill, hold the screw, hold the legs, hold the other side support. Uh, and clamps I found with these angle cuts don't really work. So it's a bit of a pain. I'm gonna try my best and we'll see how it goes. I just remembered that I have these little bad boys. What you do is you drill the hole, take one of these out, They're flat on one side, cylindrical on the other. It's like a little tube, slides in, plugs that hole. You don't even realize that there's a hole on your board. So I'm gonna leave the holes facing downward on the table, AKA away from the tabletop face. And uh, that way I don't have to hold these suspended in the air. It should make screwing them down a little bit easier when I'm assembling. For a shorter piece like this, it's a little tricky. So you put the jig on there, you drill the one way first, flip it over, drill the other way. But what's gonna happen is your jig sits on top of this and is gonna totally cover your hole. So you won't be able to see, you just gotta base it center to center. And if it was any shorter than this and these whole main parts where the head goes in, or any closer, you'd probably overlap and then you'd have to get creative. I would probably do one on top, one on bottom here, go in the opposite direction. That way your whole, your whole entry points don't run into each other. It's probably not a big deal in the long run, but it might overlap and uh, just maybe not look as good, maybe not sit flush on your tabletop, sort of things like that. One thing to do as you're getting ready to set up for assembling, just go ahead, put screws in when you can, uh, and then you just wanna go till you can feel it start to poke out on the other side. So hopefully that's clear for you. But you do that because if you push it out too far, when you go to snug down your piece, it will actually cause you to have a gap between the two pieces of wood because when it hits the other piece of wood it's going to be further back as it's going in so it's not ever going to snug that down to be flush with the other face so again don't go out too far I had to back that one up just a little bit all right so you're going to lay this out Make sure you're all lined up. I went with my template pro tip. These imperfections on the wood like that, they're gonna mainly sand out, but I turn them and face them inward on my table because you're gonna mainly see the outsides of this table. I mean, if you stand at an angle, you can kind of see that. And I also flip them to where they're gonna be more towards the top. The reason why I do that is because, like, just it's just because of angles. Like, if you're standing up tall, you're gonna be able to see downward a little easier than you would if it's closer to the top. The tabletop's gonna hide most of that. And then, like, say my wife wants to put like a table runner or or like some sort of cloth over this table as decoration, or maybe hang floral down. Um, it's gonna cover that up when it hangs a little bit lower, so that'll actually be hidden. So those are just things to keep in mind when you're like selecting the faces of the wood that you want to be shown and not shown. The other thing is I actually have these corner brackets and they're little L brackets. What you're going to do to hold, now that I have this whole thing set up, I don't want my side pieces here, here, and in there. I don't want those shifting back and forth. They're in a good spot. So I'm gonna screw this down to the base, the tabletop, and I'm gonna screw the other side into the into this side piece there in order to hold that into place so they're not rocking back and forth or moving left to right. They may rotate in and out. They may rotate 
like this, but they're not moving this way or this way. And I can live with a little rotation like that because once I get both ends of my table legs screwed in, it's gonna stop, it's gonna fix that. So the other thing is, I'm completely flush right here. Actually, I'm a little bit over, but that's okay because at the end of this, you hit it with a sander. And when you sand it down, those edges will look the same. The only reason why I suggest all that is because I made these, um, I made this console table as end tables already. So I kind of already went through the hiccups that um, were with this. So I'm, and I was following somebody's design that they put on Pinterest. So, um, you know, they weren't very thorough with their instructions. And uh, FYI, that's gonna be one of the things that we're working on this year is making sure that when you make a plan and you give it to somebody else, they're able to follow that plan without having to have any questions about what they're doing. Because when you leave things open for questions, that's when mistakes happen or that's when injuries occur because you're having to second guess yourself and you're not very confident with what you're doing. Solid plan makes for a safe plan. Another pro tip, it's easy to forget to add glue to your project. Glue is like an extra level of security here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna glue all these sides down to the tabletop and then I'll glue the legs together as well. Um, that way, if the screw does loosen over time because sometimes wood loses its integrity, so you got kind of wobbling going, a wobbling effect going on, it'll loosen up that hole so then that screw could eventually pull out. So what you do with the glue is it locks in that grip and then it won't allow for the faces to slide on each other. Therefore, you won't get that wobbling effect. So, um, but before I glue the tabletop down to the base of this table, I want to secure those sideboards again, like I said, with the corner brackets. And once I have those secured and then I glue all my legs together, then I'll take those corner braces off. I'll flip my table over and I'm gonna sand all of that down first. Then I'll add glue around to the surface. Then I'll put the tabletop back onto it and then reattach it down because I want my table to be as flush as possible. I don't want it to be tilted, leaning any direction because then it just doesn't sit as nicely inside a home. Another tip, you got glue? Keep a napkin around, it'll make a mess, clean it up. So now I'm remembering why I inserted these on the opposite side. Because when you put the drill down here into the hole, it doesn't line up right. And then so you're blocked from screwing it all the way in. So I'm gonna have to try to get creative, see if I can fix that. If not, I might have to do something different here. I might have to take it out and go from the top side. Which isn't the end of the world because I already will have one leg supported completely on both sides. So I can just go back and add that pocket hole from the top. All right, so I was saying that I couldn't get the screwdriver in there to make this work, but um, I found an alternative. So I had, this bit it came out of the screwdriver and i have this racket or, sorry ratchet um handle so i plugged that in there and then i was working at it for a minute until i couldn't really get it anymore because the angle was wrong so i went and i found another bit that was similar to it and i put these vice grips onto it and now i'm just kind of working it in slowly but surely trying to tighten it down now the thing about these pocket holes is that sometimes they'll poke through. So what I mean by that is over here, I've actually come out the side of this hole. So I'm gonna have to back that up just a little bit because obviously you don't want a screw showing through the edge of your board. All right, so got it assembled. Now I gotta take those corner brackets off and then I'm gonna sand the top of that uh, not the tabletop, the top of the leg base. And then that will be flush. I'll add glue to that. 
put the tabletop back on and then re-secure those corner brackets up into the thing. Um, and I think what I'll do is go out and get a couple more of those corner brackets because of just how long the tabletop actually is. I don't want to create gaps here over time in between this thing. Um, and also remember, I'm gonna put these lower, sorry. Remember, I'm gonna put these lower cross braces on here to kind of pull that in so the legs aren't going all crazy on me. You don't want that to happen. And then I'll put that beam going long ways down the middle and that beam holds it from wobbling back and forth this way and then also it just kind of is aesthetically nice aesthetics is just that means like how things look so there it is gonna finish this up real quick and um, we'll move on from there All right, so what I did right there was take six inches from the bottom of each leg, and then I put a mark, and I followed up with that mark to, and used my straight edge to make sure that when I am lining my piece up, I know exactly how it's gonna fit on this board. That way I don't have anything skewed this way or that way. Um, and then after that, I've decided to use a nail gun, a Brad nailer. That's this thing, the quarter cable. Um, basically, when I drilled out my holes for um, the pocket holes, they're not, it's, I don't wanna mess around with having to use the vice grips again, so I decided, hey, why don't I just use this nailer and some glue? And uh, it's not really supporting anything. It's just kind of preventing that wobble back and forth. So like there should be no weight on it, which shouldn't cause, which, which shouldn't necessitate um, having screws through the wood there. Again, always have on your PPE before you do anything that has potential to be dangerous.
that's the one thing I forgot to do here. Remember, you're going to glue both ends, and then you're going to want to have a napkin around because it's going to get a little messy. All right, so I came out in this spot. Not a huge deal. Take you a pair of these snippers. Get it up flush against there. Snip it off. Okay, if there's a little bit left, do it again. Yeah, there's still a little bit left, so what I'll do is I'll take a hammer and just make sure that's knocked in there all the way. Uh, you can see I kind of came through on the other side too. Sorry for the poor camera angles. Alright, final step. We're building. Go ahead and put a cross member there. So, I didn't have a measurement beforehand because I wanted to find out the exact measurement of this final thing, okay? So. so before I move too far forward, I want to address those clamps that I was using. Basically, because I was doing it myself, I took one of these clamps, put it up on that underside, and used it as an extra set of fingers. Um, that way I could hold the wood in place on the other side while I lined it up on let's say the left side and then held it on the right side um, that way I could hold the nail gun and uh, do it safely too so I could get my fingers out of the way because uh, as as you could see sometimes those things pop through that's probably the main reason why I try to avoid that brad nailer um, because I don't like having like you know the nail sticking out on the side of it I don't like it pushing the wood out of the way uh, when it splinters through sometimes. So uh, screws are usually a lot cleaner. Um, all right, last measurement is 43 and three quarters. Um, so I'm gonna line that up, get it cut, slap that bad boy on there. Pro tip, I always measure twice. I just went back and measured, it's actually 42 and three quarters. 
Wouldn't it have been the worst thing? Because like I've been saying, if you cut it too long, then you can always go back and make an adjustment. If you go too short, no going back, scrap wood. So remember when I cut that board earlier on the wrong distance? And I might not have talked about it, I forget at this point. But I did the wrong measurement and I made it too short. And uh, I ended up having to go into one of my other boards. Well, when I planned for the project, I planned on having some scraps, but now I got three long pieces of scrap that are too short to be used across that bottom part of that table. I'm gonna have to go back to Lowe's now, pick up another piece of wood. Project planning, measure twice. All right, so I'm back from Lowe's with the board. I want y'all to look at this. This is more like rough cut. And then this is more like a finish board. So they didn't have this type anymore at the Lowe's I went to, but they only had this one. When, when this board sands up, it'll look closer to this, but this is gonna look nicer regardless. So um, that's another issue with having to go to the store and get more wood after you've already bought all the wood for your project. Sometimes they go out of stock and now I'm using different boards. Um, it should still look fine once I get this all finished up, but it's one of those things where, you know, you don't want to make mistakes because I just wasted 35 minutes going to Lowe's, had to spend more money. All right, so this time I was able to use these clamps basically just lined it up in the middle. This side's a little off because these legs, for whatever reason, are kind of leaning, so I try to bring it back. But the board itself is parallel with the tabletop. And then over on this side, it's lined up nice and neat. Drilled my pocket holes in there, and I have finished all but just sanding and staining at this point. All right, so here's the table. Got it all set up in the house. The only thing is, it doesn't quite fit the space yet because we're waiting on a new couch. But as you can see, it looks pretty good in the spot, away from the door there. Got the nice tabletop. Sports in the middle. The reason why I'm filming this is it's supposed to match the color of this end table and there's one on the opposite side of the couch. So next steps are sand and stain. So my older floors, they're a little bit uneven in places and it'll cause this thing to rock because the legs aren't touching in the same spots. So what you do to prevent that, or to at least help, is add these. You just stick them on the bottom of whatever you got and it should level it out some. Now, also it's a good idea to do that on hardwood floors so you don't scratch your stuff like this existing scratch that I have on the floor there. The single most important step that you take now is clean up your tools and your mess. There's nothing worse than leaving stuff behind, being disorganized, you end up losing things.